top five coaches that need a good week. I'm not doing a hot seat thing. I'm just saying these guys need a good week. Number five, Marcus Freeman needs a good week. First Notre Dame coach in history to start at 0 and 3. Uh, he, there's a lot of a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people invested in his success, but he's the first one to start at 0 and 3. And I would just think to get that win, to get that that off your back would would be good for them going forward. I still think he's going to be a good coach there, but they're without their starting quarterback probably for the rest of the season. So. Things have changed in a hurry in Notre Dame from being a top five team to being a team that you got to wonder how many games that they can muster playing with a backup quarterback and losing a game that should have been a gimme uh, to most people in the Sun Belt. Although I think that Sun Belt gimme idea has probably vanished if you're That's smart a now. stupid thing to say. And remember, they did that video about the uniforms and all of that, and it just seemed like everything he was doing was, you know, like – Young and hip and, and, and completely different than Brian Kelly. And and listen, when LSU lost that game to Florida State and, and the way they lost, I'm sure there were a lot of Notre Dame fans just, just rev, relishing that. And yet they have their own problem. And I, I would think Brian Kelly's going to win at LSU before Marcus Freeman wins at Notre Dame. Would you take that bet? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, like, probably, yeah. but, I mean, I don't know, like, if it'll be significant, I no, mean, it might yeah. be like a year ahead of time, but, but also, you know, there's a little bit of a different standard at those two schools in terms of how you could get there. So I yeah. think Marcus Freeman probably has a few like rules to follow. Whereas um, LSU, I think that they embrace the fact that it's basically a lawless land that it, all, it, as long as you win, it, it doesn't really matter how you did it. That's pretty much Louisiana as a state. It is. I mean, it <laughs> absolutely is like that. That, Anybody wants to argue that, go right ahead, but it's true. Um, and, and they embrace that, and they they love that, whether it's from the outside, you know, respected or not. But, you know, losing Tyler Buckner, that obviously hurts. I mean, it wasn't like he was lighting the world on fire to start the season, uh, however. But, yeah, that, that still hurts, and you saw his backup comes in and throws a pick right away to seal the game. So it's like they were just damned if they did, damned if they didn't on, on Saturday. I, I think he'll be a good coach. I mean, I know all of the reasons why people were excited about him to begin with, but that is, you know, a pretty big job and uh, not one that you just, you know, it's uh, it's just simply a matter of being cool and being able to recruit. Like, there's so much that comes with that no matter where you are. And so I'm curious to see his journey and, and whether he's able to learn from these lessons and, and uh, get this thing back on course. And I'm sure he will. And uh, I'm sure that once he does that, then we'll we'll see them winning some games. But, yeah, that's been been really shocking so far. Yeah. Number four, Carl Durrell at, uh, at Colorado. Can you really tell me anything that's going well at Colorado right now? I no. Can you tell me anything? This. Yeah, yeah. You did. I was like, prior to TCU. Yeah. yeah, like what's going on at Colorado? Nothing. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if they have – you almost – and I don't want to say this. It's not – it's almost like you forget they're there. Yes. Yes. They've, they've been basically irrelevant since um, Steven Montez was there a couple of years ago and got them into what a packed title game because they were in a you know weaker division, quite frankly. But um, they had pretty good success there. Um, you know, but they lost, you know, like Jarek Broussard, who's sitting there doing really well for Michigan State, was a guy that they had on that roster. And they've had some talent, but I, I just think now it's like, you know, with the transfer portal and all that, like what talent they, they do have is going to, take off because why would you stay there? You're not playing for anything, really. There's, they're not going to win a pack title anytime soon. You're definitely not getting in the playoff anytime soon. There's just, they're there. They're just there. And that's all I can really say about them. Yeah. We talk about Nebraska losing their identity. Colorado clearly has, because you know, it's, and I don't even know what really what that was anyway. Yeah. It's like, I mean, Colorado is just kind of the, I, I don't know. What was their identity? They, they was, were, they used to be one of those teams that was always good. They wanted to, uh, 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 uh a, a natty in 1990s, right, I just, with, but like I know we know about Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook yeah. and Rashawn Salam, but like I don't know what they're like. They were just like kind of like the bad boys of the yeah. the the Big 12, uh, almost in a way. I don't know if it was the black uniforms, maybe that made me feel that way as a young kid. But and, and also rooting for Nebraska, maybe that's why they felt like kind of like the the bad guys uh, to me in that regard. But outside of that, like I have no, like I think of Colorado football and I think of. Michael Westbrook and Rashawn mm -hmm. Salam and those guys and Cordell Stewart and uh, Coach McCarthy. But that's also Coach when McCarthy. I was not even in high school, and that's really long time ago. Yeah. Uh, really long time ago now at this point. So yeah, they're just they're kind of there, and he's 
there's I don't see really any ways that he's he's there very much longer. Well, they did have Dan McCarney as well. Hey, the murals. It's a Big Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, that's a long time ago. Number three, Jimbo Fisher. Um, I was at the my doctor was at the doctor this morning, and uh, my doctor is uh, an Aggie, and uh, he said, "How you doing?" I said, "Probably better than Jimbo," and he he said, "Yes, you are doing better than Jimbo Fisher yeah. right now," and that is the feeling of. It's hit the point of now where the optimism is kind of gone, and it's you are making a bleep load of money, Jimbo. This university is paying you a bleep load of money to win games, and Texas A&M right now, I said it earlier, they are paying Bentley prices and getting uh, Ford Explorer results. That's what they're doing, and I'm not knocking the Ford Explorer. I've driven two of them in my life. I love the Ford Explorer, but... I'm telling you, uh, if I was paying Bentley prices, I'd want a damn Bentley. And they are not a Bentley right now. Oh, he just needs more time, right? <laughs> just needs six years to get this thing on track. I mean, he's there's there's no excuses here of, of mm-hmm. any shape or form. That there's no like, even a, the most diehard A and M fans won't sit there and try to stand up for him right now because they know that that was embarrassing on Saturday. It's embarrassing where they are this deep into his tenure. They're not anywhere closer to where they were supposed to be than when they hired him. They're not. They're, if anything, they might be further away. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not good right now. It's been a bad year for like twelve months with them, a little over that because of the SEC decision with Oklahoma and Texas, and you know you had that separation and you had the momentum, and then that that's going to come back and get you a little bit. They not- got their asses kicked. Like that wasn't just like I, I understand, but they like got they got physically whooped in so many oh, ways. Oh no, on there's Saturday. one thing to lose a game is another thing when you're a big boy program when somebody physically beats you yeah, up. That's, took their that's, guts, that's, took their guts that right out. That takes your manhood. Yeah, number two, Scott Satterfield at Louisville uh, had the stay of execution uh, after getting the win last Friday night against UCF. Uh, welcomes another team from Florida into Louisville this week in Florida State. Uh, Florida State. Um, you know, if they can win this game, it's going to be great for Mike Norvell. Uh, it's going to be really bad for Scott Satterfield. Uh, just shared a text with, uh, you know, a friend of ours in the Louisville media says that the the, wor- the worm has turned on him. And he this is going to be a big one. I do wonder, though, even if he did win this week, if that's just a stay of execution, if he's just going to turn around and lose to some other games in the ACC. And beating Florida State doesn't mean near as much as it used to. Uh, it might mean something for him for a short time, but he's got to beat Florida State, and he also has to go beat Clemson and everybody else in the ACC to to really make a difference. Hasn't he been on here kind of before? Oh, yeah. He's, he's to me, he's he and he and this next guy are kind of at the top of the list. Now, the next guy we talked about earlier in the show. Wait a he, minute. Did they not just beat UCF? Yeah. Yeah. He just but, said that. Yeah, they I just know, beat but, UCF, but he's got to do more than that. Okay. The, right. You know, uh, 2020, he went and interviewed at South Carolina and lied about it. And since then, everybody's been like, well, that's and it's not. That's where we could kind of start is, yeah, that's as much of anything is like when you do we're doing that and you're not winning. Well, you just gave them all the ammunition in the world. If you hadn't done that and you, you lose and then you beat UCF, like, hey, yeah, you beat UCF, but now it's almost like, no, you've already you've already soured the pool here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Number one, Neil Brown. They've got Towson this week, so he's probably going to have a good week. He needs to have a good couple of weeks. He's got to go beat Towson. He's got to beat Virginia Tech as well. He has to do that. Uh, I don't think they're going to lose to Towson, but – um, you know, strange things that happen in college football. Uh, this could be a good get-right game for West Virginia, but this week and next are pretty big for Neil Brown. I think coming out two and two is pretty important. One and three after the next couple weeks is only going to make things worse for him, especially considering how Virginia Tech started their season losing to Old Dominion from the Sun, Sun Belt. Belt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. well, uh, I mean, they're definitely going to beat Towson. Uh, yeah. I'd be shocked if that doesn't happen. Um, but, you know, beyond that, I don't know uh, about Virginia Tech. And then they get Texas and Baylor uh, pretty much back-to-back. So that's uh, how they're going to start Big 12 play beyond the loss to start it last week against Kansas. So, yeah, um, they better better get right in a hurry because it's not going to get any easier. That's for sure. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jacob Wilson, Emory.